Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cobble Skill United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Anna, and it is my great joy to be the pastor here. Welcome to our 19th Sunday after Pentecost, and we are going to worship God through song and prayer and the Holy Scripture this morning. So I'm grateful to see each and every one of you here today, and also those who might be joining us online. Welcome to our worship service today. I'm going to invite Alan and Paige to come up and lead us in the call to worship. In the midst of anger and fear, in the midst of mayhem and destruction, God calls us. With everything else going on, who has time for a feast? We're busy. We'll get around to eating eventually. In the midst of our anxiety, our worry, in the midst of bill paying and appointments, God invites us. We are tempted to just grab a bite, a sandwich between errands, a snack we can eat while driving or checking email or working on today's big project. But the feast is spread. All are invited. All are welcome. We are invited. We are welcome. We are worthy. How will we respond? Thank you. This morning, as we move into our prayer time, I would um, love to hear what joys or concerns you have on your mind this morning. We, um, of course, live busy lives full of um, lots going on, and the world is full of certainly things that need our prayers this morning. But one of the traditions we have at church uh, is to share our burdens together and to lift up uh, so that we can know that we're in this together and that God hears our prayers. If you have a joy or concern you'd like to share this morning, raise your hand and I will find you and you can say it out loud. First of all, we have, um, this must be Columbus Day weekend because all of our educators are not here. I'm noticing a lot of gaps in our pews this morning because a lot of our teachers and principals and staff at the colleges uh, take this weekend to enjoy one last weekend of summer. And it certainly has been a nice summery weekend, hasn't it? Beautiful weather. So we are praying for everyone who is not with us in person this morning, although the benefit of having so much technology now is that they can take part in our worship service from anywhere that they are. So what joys and concerns do you all bring with you this morning? Yes, Judy. We want to pray for Judy's friend who is um, dealing with cancer and uh, the advancement of cancer and her family who must be worried and caring for her. So thank you for sharing that this morning. Yes, yeah, Suzanne. Uh, lift up um, Elizabeth uh, again this week and all of those who knew her and loved her. She died much too soon and um, it's shocking for her family and her friends who must have um, just been completely blindsided by this. So we pray for everyone who is mourning Liz um, this week 
and in the days to come. Thank you for that. Yeah, Don. Oh boy, a birthday. <laughs> So you had to attend the wedding of your grandson on Zoom. Yes. They could only have 10 in attendance. Oh my. Well, such are these times, but I am so glad that you were able to attend as it was. And happy birthday to you, Patty. Were there any other birthdays this week? No, just you, Patty. Coming up birthdays in the next week. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> they beat me to it. My parents are here and they are um, up in the balcony with June, and it's nice to have them up. Virginia was taken off the list, and so they have come for a visit, and we're happy to have them. And uh, you know them because they led worship a couple of Sundays uh, this summer when I was on leave. So um, I'm sure they're feeling like home being here with you all. Other joys or concerns we want to lift up, Paige. Awesome. Okay, thank you for sharing that. It, um, it's nice to have joy in the midst of so much suffering and I think the leaf colors this year have been a sign and a gift from God for us to just uh, enjoy the beauty and the, um, the marvelous nature of creation that's around us all the time. Thank goodness for a time away with our family to enjoy that. And we want to lift up um, your brother and sister-in-law and their struggle right now with caregiving. That's certainly something that a lot of people are dealing with, and um, we our hearts go out to them and their concern. And um, your friend who lost his father to COVID, it is such a real concern these days, not only the loss of life related to COVID, but the way it impacts how families are able to grieve and, and be with their loved ones in the last hours of their life. And um, I just, my, it's just heartbreaking. There's really no other word for it. And so our hearts go out to all of those who are grieving loss of life this day. Yes, in the back. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You said that was your grandmother? Your mother. Your mother. It is. It's, it adds so much stress to occasions and reunions that should be happy. Um, so, yeah. That's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. Well, absolutely. We lift up your uh, visit and, and pray that it may be joyous and that the love can transcend all of the fear that's going on right now. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Well, let us take all of these joys and all of these concerns to God now for a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we quiet our minds this morning and still our souls, we open ourselves up to the flooding of your presence. As we have carved time out of our weeks and arrived here in this sacred space, surrounded by a community of faith, we are reminded that you are here to meet us whenever we stop to listen. Oh God, on this day we carry with ourselves so much hurt and so much pain, so much fear and uncertainty. In these days of the pandemic, it is difficult to get away from all of those feelings, to find peace and joy. Yet we know that you are still there offering us those remarkable gifts, that you are breaking through the fear and the pain to show us brilliant colors all around us, to show us the laughter of the children around us, to show us the smiling eyes of a stranger. Oh God, we thank you for these gifts. As we lift up to you the concerns and the joys that were shared this morning, we know that you have heard us, that you have seen us, that you are with us. We pray this day for all of those people and situations that are on our minds. We pray for our loved ones who are not in here with us today. And we ask your blessing upon those reunions that we have in the future. Oh God, you have heard the concerns that have left our lips this morning, but there are concerns that we have not yet been ready to say out loud. And we know that you hear those as well. For all of the unspoken concerns this morning, oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we lift up our hearts this morning, joined as one in your radiant love, and we lift up our voices as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I am going to, I know we have a few children here, and I'm wondering if you want to come up for the, children's time or if we want to do like a group children's time. We have less children here than we usually do. What are you thinking? You want to come up and have children's time? Okay, come on up and we'll stay, we'll stay distant from each other. And I have some questions for you about parties because I think you might know something about them. So keep yourself distant. Hello, nice to see you. 
That's a perfect spot for you to sit right there. Okay, June may join us in a moment. So, um, have you ever been to a party? That is my question. What kind of parties are your favorite? Birthday parties, me too. They're so fun. What, what's one of your favorite thing about a party? Um, like, like giving out presents. Giving out presents, yeah. Do you like to be the giver of presents? Yeah, that's really fun. Do you also like to receive presents? Yes, PJ said yes, definitely. Do you like to receive presents too? Yeah, both, both things are fun. Um, and what are some other things about birthday parties that you really like? Um, I like, like um, making the cake. Making the cake, you like to cook. That's really fun. Celebrating birthdays, like another year around the sun, another year older. Do you like anything about birthday parties? <laughs> Um, one of the things I like about birthday parties is getting to invite lots of friends over. Do you all like that too? So I want you to try and imagine if God threw a party. Yeah, I know, it's kind of hard to imagine. God, who is, you know, the one who created us, who loved us. What do you think a party that God threw would look like? A real birthday party. Yeah, do you think it would be um, like decorations, maybe? Um, out of glass, because there's no decorations. Decorations out of clouds. I love that idea. Yes. What else would be at God's party that God would throw? That, I love that idea. So all of the people who have gone on before us and died would all be there at the party that God was throwing. We'd be surrounded. Sometimes we call that a cloud of witnesses. All of the people who've gone before us would be at the party. I love that. Do you think that everyone would be invited? Mm -hmm. I, I can't really imagine God saying, you can come, but you can't come. That does not sound like God to me. Yeah. Do you think that the food would be delicious? Yeah, I think so. I think everything about a party that God would throw would be amazing. So today in the rest of our service, we're going to be talking about parties. We're actually going to be talking about what we wear to parties as a... As a metaphors, a way of talking about um, what God expects from us when we come to God's party. So I want you to be listening to And while you're sitting at your seat, I'm going to give you a bulletin to work on, and you can color that in and show it to me at the end of church. So let's say a prayer together. Dear God, we know that if you were to throw us a party, it would be the most amazing thing ever. And thank you, O oh God, for telling us and reminding us that we will always be invited. As we learn about the party you're throwing for us today, help us to remember to be people who come ready to celebrate. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up, and let me get you a bulletin. You can find in the back hallway, there are bags with crayons in them. Oops, sorry.
Today's reading comes from Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. And while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them, the king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroying these murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they had found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe and asked him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him to the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Standing back there and I realized that the lights weren't all on up here. And it seems like a day when we're gonna talk about parties, all the lights should be on. So my question for you this morning as we get started here is, how do you typically decide what you're going to wear? I bet you didn't see that coming. So if you're like me, you might have a process. First, I look at the weather report. This to me makes the biggest difference. My 93-year-old grandmother, who in her infinite wisdom, says, there's no such thing as bad weather, only the wrong clothing. That's true, isn't it? If it's a day like yesterday, I had to dig out my shorts to be happy. If it was a day like today and I had worn my shorts, I would have been unhappy. The next thing I might consider is 
when deciding what to wear is what day of the week it is, right? Maybe this is something you think about too. If it's um, a Saturday and I'm going to go visit a farm with my family, I might wear jeans. If it's Monday, which is the day I do my laundry, I'm probably wearing sweatpants. If it's Sunday and I'm expected to stand in front of you and do worship, I probably am not going to wear sweatpants or jeans. Probably not. And so the final touch when I'm thinking about what am I going to wear today, and maybe this is you too, I ask myself, what kind of mood am I in today? Am I in a colorful mood or an earth tone mood? Or is this a wear black from head to toe kind of day? Apparently today I was in a polka dot mood. Maybe it's because we're talking about parties. I don't know. I don't know if this is the steps you go through when you're thinking about how you're going to get dressed. Maybe not. Maybe you just pick out whatever is clean next to you. That's important. But I think we can all probably admit that wearing clothes is important and that there are times when we have made the wrong choice of what to wear. Anyone ever been in those situations? Yes. So wardrobe choices are the topic of our gospel reading today. Jesus tells a parable about a time when a guest to a party wore the wrong clothes. But, like last week, if you remember last week, the story that we're hearing this morning is an allegory, which means Jesus is using a situation that is relatable. We can all relate to the situation of wearing the wrong thing to the right event. He uses that situation to teach a more difficult lesson, a bigger lesson that helps us understand our faith and God better. So let's find out what wardrobe decisions have to do with our relationship to God. In this parable, there is a king, perhaps resembling God, who is throwing a huge party. It's a wedding banquet for his son. And to make a very long story short, all of the VIPs to this party have found other things to do. So any of us who might have had a son or daughter get married can imagine the amount of work that goes into a wedding. And then at the last minute to find out all of your guest list has decided to do other things. We can imagine how this king was feeling. And so he's thinking, well, I have all of this party prepared. I've spent all of this money. I've made all this food. Someone has to enjoy this feast. So he tells his servants, go out into the streets, find anyone you can, and tell them to get in here, and we'll have a party. So they do that. And the hall begins to fill up with street people, people who are perhaps perfect strangers to the king. And they're all enjoying the the festivities together. And it's going well until one person shows up in their street clothes instead of changing into their wedding clothes. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so what? I mean, after all, he had been invited off of the street five minutes ago. Who has time to go out and buy wedding clothes when you're given a last-minute invitation to the party? But this is where knowing about weddings and the day of Jesus is important. Unlike today, where if you get a wedding invitation, you have to go out and buy your new dress or your new clothes Back in Jesus' day, when a fancy wedding was happening, the person hosting the wedding also provided all of the wedding clothes for all of the guests. Sounds pretty nice, right? So when you walked into the wedding, I just imagined this coat room full of fancy clothes, and you pick out one that fits and you put it on. So it was then even more striking that when given a generous invitation, to a perfect stranger's party and offered the right attire at the door, 
one guest refused to change and thought it would be okay to enjoy the party in his regular old street clothes. So what is the connection to us? What is the party that God has invited us to? And how can we make sure that we are ready when we show up? So hang with me for just a second. What if I told you the party that God is inviting you and me to is actually right here, right now, right in front of us, but in a parallel reality. What I am talking about is the kingdom of God. The party that God is inviting us to is the kingdom of God, the realm of our divine creator in which love rules. A realm that is always possible right in front of us, but not always the realm in which we actually choose to live. The kingdom of God is often in the Bible compared to a glorious feast, be it a wedding or just a fancy banquet in which the table is really long, so long that anyone who comes has a seat. The food is exquisite, and everyone, even those who think they are undeserving, are invited. So this is the really incredible news in this parable that Jesus is telling us. Right now, right here, God is inviting us to step into a world in which love rules everything. This is God's party that God is throwing for us. A new life. A life transformed where God offers us unconditional acceptance and forgives all of our past shortcomings. But this is what you need to know. There is more to this new life of faith than just showing up. Yes, you have to show up. That is the first step. But if showing up is all you do, if you make no effort to really want to be there, if you come in in your street clothes when you were offered a fancy dress or a suit, then do you really want to be there at all? When you come to God's party, God expects you to come prepared, wearing the beautiful clothes that God has set out for you, love, compassion, patience, kindness, humility. Because if you aren't wearing those garments, then you're probably wearing the opposite, a short temper, self-centeredness, greed, idolatry, anger, meanness. If you RSVP to the kingdom of God, you decide to follow Jesus, then you must understand that you will be expected to rise to the occasion and change some things about your life. Yes, the invitation has been given to you, and yes, it's a standing invitation. It's not going to go anywhere. But are you coming in your street clothes? Are you wearing the same old self-centeredness, greed, quick temper, self-righteous judgment that you wear every other day of your life? Why would you wear those things when God has given you such a generous pile of beautiful clothes that honestly fit you so much better? Put on love. It looks good on you. Let us pray. 
Oh God, when we wake up in the morning and we begin to think, what are we going to wear today? Let your spirit come into our lives. Guide us into making decisions that would dress us appropriately for your kingdom. Let us put on love. Let us put on kindness. Let us put on humility and patience. Oh God, in the days and weeks to come as we face increasing pressure to sink to our lowest selves, help us to rise above that, to step into the realm that you have created for us, a realm where love rules, because that is the party to which you constantly want us to come. Help us to be people dressed appropriately, spreading your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne and Betsy. That was beautiful. I just have a closing thought for you. When a person was baptized throughout most of Christian history, there was a tradition of the person being baptized wearing white. And this was not just because um, they wanted new clothes. It was because it symbolically meant that when you are turning your life over to God, you are leaving behind your old clothes and putting on the clothes that God has given you that symbolize a new start, a fresh beginning. And so I want to leave you with that thought that as we continue to reaffirm our faith in God, what are we choosing to put on? Is it becoming or is it love? Is it the garments that look good on us? that help to make the world a better place. I have a few announcements to share with you. And um, the first one is that we are not passing offering plates this morning. But if you have an offering you would like to give, 
to the ministry of God through this church, I invite you to use the offering plates that are at the end of the sanctuary in the narthex. You have bulletins today, which is unusual. We, don't, we haven't been printing bulletins because we've been using a PowerPoint. However, I, at the last minute, we did not have a PowerPoint operator this morning, so I had to print bulletins and um, let this serve as a reminder that we need PowerPoint clickers. So if that's something that you would like to volunteer for, it helps us in our planning if we know a few days ahead of time that we'll have someone who can do that. We have coming up the crop walk and um, Anne-Marie, do you want to say anything about that? Um, there are still some envelopes. You can use this microphone, actually. Let me make sure it's on. Yeah. There are a few envelopes available on the name tag table out in the social hall for anyone who would still like to participate. Again, you can walk anywhere, anytime this week. Uh, money, the donations are due next Sunday. So I plan to be here in church. If you're participating, you can return those donations to me here in church next Sunday. And don't forget to mark on your envelope, as the instructions say, what size t-shirt you would like. I will be picking up those t-shirts when I turn the money in Sunday afternoon. All right, so if you want to help uh, end hunger by raising money and walking, you can do that. If you would like to just give money toward the crop walk, you can do that too by supporting. We have some walkers here. We have some walkers. Oh. Rosalie and Anne Marie look like the ones who are here today. So if you'd like to support the crop walk, and Suzanne. So if you'd like to support the crop walk, what percentage of this money goes back to our local food pantries? 25% stays here in Schoharie County, including our church food pantry. And then the rest of it goes to help alleviate hunger worldwide. Worldwide and throughout this country. Wonderful. Thank you, Anne Marie, for coordinating that for our church. My next announcement is about Halloween, and this is just a reminder that our church is located in Halloween Central, and so we're going to use this opportunity to get to know our neighbors and um, share a safe and fun experience for our kids. And if you'd like to be part of helping us to decorate or to, um, uh, we're gonna staff, we're gonna have this Halloween walkthrough in the back of our property, um, over there, yes. And uh, we're going to decorate it and have it be really festive and fun. And we're going to have a little candy shoot where you ring a bell and candy comes down a pipe into your bucket. All of this is going to be super fun. And if you'd like to help, we need donations of candy. We need volunteers to help us um, decorate. And we need um, trunks. If you'd like to decorate your trunk, we're going to have trunk or treat in the back parking lot. So if any of that sounds like fun to you, we've already gotten some donations of candy. Thank you to those of you who have done that. And my last announcement is that we are um, we're having a new member class for anyone who would like to join our church. So if this sounds like something that you would like to do, it's a great opportunity to get to know me and our church and other new people a little bit better. So speak to me after church. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. I believe that is all. Um, are there any other announcements I might have forgotten? All right. Well, as you go out into your week, I hope that you will take with you the Holy Spirit who will empower you to make good decisions about how you are dressing yourself for a world that desperately needs your love and your kindness, your humility, that you can show because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Go now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to love and serve your neighbor. Amen. Amen.